Hey friends, welcome to the Flight Test. I'm Josh. Today we're going to be showing you how to use the F2 or light in the configuration tool to program some very simple or some very advanced flap around controls. Now, flap arounds are really useful for slowing down your airplane while using just the basic controls of your ailerons. Flap arounds basically means flaps and ailerons combined together. Now, there's some really cool things that you could do with flap arounds, but there's also some really important things you got to take notice of to make sure that you don't change how the plane's going to fly or how it stalls. We're going to kind of walk you through the most basic setup all the way to the most advanced setup that you can do with your flaperons and have a great experience along the way. And also a huge thank you to our tech channel partner, JLC PCB. You guys obviously can see that we love taking common everyday materials and combine them with advanced technology. If you guys have a design or idea that you want to see become a reality around the circuit board design, JLC PCB can be the solution for you to get to you economically and quickly. Now this video is in specific response to a lot of questions people had about programming their flaperons. Oftentimes if you have something like a spectrum radio, you can use the flaperon setup in the radio just to pass through the aura board and use all your setup on the transmitter. But the reason we're doing this video is I want everybody to be able to have flaperons even through the most basic non-computerized radio. The biggest thing for this video is you're going to want to have your flaperon set up on just a two position switch for aux one channel. This video is also going to be a really good resource to understand how mixing works with the aura configuration tools in case you want to do things like mix your ailerons and rudder together or maybe even your throttle and your elevator together to kind of get rid of some of that pitch issues you may have with a plane that has a very high wing and a very low motor. Let's go ahead and gather our computer, a model, a radio, and a battery, and we'll get started. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is start with a bare bones FT Aura 5, and I'm going to take you through step by step through going through the configuration tool all the way through this tuning. The other thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we have a two position switch right here programmed to our AUX1 channel. The way that we're going to do this is we're going to go down to system settings. There you go, system setup. Yes, we're sure. And then we're going to go to channel assign. Right there. We're gonna scroll all the way to next. And where it says aux one, I'm just gonna go ahead and flip the A switch and that's automatically gonna lock it in. Now this is specific for the Spectrum radios. FR Sky or any other radios may be a little bit different, but just at the end of the day, make sure that you have this program to a two position switch for this exact setup. Let's go ahead next out of that. And our next step here is we're gonna open up our configuration tool. For programming these flap rounds, we are going to need our configuration tool. If you're new to what the FT Aura configuration tool is, check out our previous video because we'll take you step by step in that video how to load the drivers and everything you needed for the configuration tool and also how to connect it to your FT Aura 5. For now, let's go ahead and plug our included USB drive into this and we'll hit connect. There we go. My radio is already turned on. That'll be important in just a second. And notice that I don't have my motor or anything connected. I just have everything plugged in the way that we need it for now. We'll hit connect. We've successfully connected it. And you're gonna see when I hit read from Aura that it's gonna pop up FT Aura 5. From this point here, we're gonna to wanna to enter into something called our configuration wizard. The cool thing about the configuration wizard is it's basically gonna have you answer a whole bunch of questions and get you 90% there already for programming your radio. So I'm gonna to go to file, new configuration file wizard. And you're gonna see that we have a whole new screen pop up. From this point, we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and name our model. In this case, I have kind of like a test model here. We're just gonna call this flaperons. Our next question is, do we want a custom airframe? You'll see that there's some preloaded configurations here. We want custom. We're gonna keep it under the flight test support profile, analog servos, single throttle. Now we're gonna to have to answer whether we want level assist or not. Level assist is where it's gonna automatically bring back the airplane back to level and make it very trainer friendly. I'm gonna say yes. We're gonna go down to our wing. Now this is the important thing. You're gonna see a whole bunch of different options for wings. We're gonna go ahead and select flaperons. All right, next we're gonna to go to the top right. I'm working off a spectrum transmitter. I have a spectrum remote receiver. And the only option here is mini port B. For our tail type, we're gonna say that we have elevator and rudder. Once we finished off all these questions, you're gonna see our server ports from one to five have already been outlined. We wanna make sure that we plug in our servos exactly the way you see here to get the results that we want. We also wanna confirm that the configuration of our Aura and the way that it's mounted is exactly like what you see in the picture. You're gonna see that the very front of the Aura where the ports are is gonna to point towards the nose and the servo ports are gonna to point towards the back. And that's correct. If you have a model where it needs to be mounted inverted, this would be the time that you'd actually roll this to the left or right or change your orientation to get it to what you want it to be. All right, that looks good. 
What I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna confirm that all my ports are plugged in properly. I'm gonna have my ESC plugged into servo port number one. That's the one all the way to the furthest left. Our left aileron is going to server port number two. Our right aileron is going to server port number three. Our elevator, which is right here, is going to server port number four. And our rudder is going to server port number five. I'm also making sure that the signal wires here are all pointing towards the center of the FT Aura control board. We now know that everything's programmed properly. Our next step here is to hit finish. It's gonna ask if we wanna save this. I absolutely recommend that you go ahead and save this right now. So we'll go at flat bronze config, we'll hit save. And at this point, it's gonna ask us if we wanna actually load the profile that we made onto the current board it's connected to. We're gonna say yes, and you're gonna notice when we hit yes, immediately it changes the title of the name to flapperons. And we also have in our wing type options and stuff, we have things like flapperons, and if we went through the menu, you'd see things that are pre-programmed now in there. None of this has been locked in until we hit the button that says write auto aura. So we're gonna do that right now. Done. All right, so at this point, let's go ahead and we'll connect our battery here. If you guys are working on an airplane that has a prop on it, at this time, make sure that you remove that prop. You never wanna have your battery connected and the prop on at the same time whenever you're doing any tuning. This goes for multi-rotors as well as it does for fixed wing airplanes. So we're gonna program this in. All right, at this point, you can see that all of our controls work. And what I strongly recommend is if you have any sub trimming to do, go ahead and do that now before moving on. But everything's nice and centered here. We just have a couple weird things we gotta address like our flaps being either reflex or down, but nothing in the middle. A really easy tip for you guys to be able to see what your radio is doing, how it's communicating through the configurator, is to turn your live data to the on position. This is gonna give you live data, so you're gonna be able to see as you switch a switch, what control mode or what box you're talking to. At this point, we're gonna to go to our mixes. Our mix one is currently on inhibit. We're gonna turn to always on. And you're gonna see the drop down box here now that's gonna give us a lot of different options. For our flaps, we want our flaps to work on all three flight modes. So we're just gonna click all three. And for our master channel, we're gonna go channel six aux one. And our slave, we're also gonna select channel six aux one. Now at this point, with our switch all the way into the reflex position, you can see that as I move it up and down, the little red box is gonna naturally grab towards where it is. So we're gonna know exactly which control we're adjusting at this point. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to move this pretty much all the way to 100%. There we go. And I'm gonna hit right to all. Boom. Now what we've done here is we've eliminated that up reflex here so it automatically, when we have the switch in the forward position, it's automatically gonna just act like normal ailerons, just like you see here. What we wanna do now is in our flat position, we wanna go ahead and increase that just a little bit. So what I'm gonna do on that, is I'm gonna move that to about 35. I'm gonna hit right all, and you're gonna see this increase. There it is. Now there's a really important thing to take note. A lot of times people think when they use flap rounds that they have to have a really extreme deflection. This is a very common misconception, and it oftentimes ends in a very bad experience with the plane either stalling, spinning, or both. Uh, what I'd like you guys to keep in mind is anytime that you're using flap rounds, you're using a lot more surface area to deflect downward. You don't need as much throw downward to get the same effects as typical barn door flaps. Also, there's another really important thing to keep in mind. As you lower your flaps, you're also increasing your drag. If you go ahead and give aileron in a position like this, what you're gonna have is you're gonna have your dropping aileron induce a lot more drag and a lot more lift. Now this can cause that side of the wing to prematurely stall on you and cause a reverse stall. This is a very bad thing, especially if you're flying low to the ground, nice and slow. Oftentimes when you have flaps, you're gonna fly more with rudder than you are with flaps. So if that's an important thing to keep in mind. When you start with this, I wouldn't adjust this more than about 30 and then test fly to make sure you're happy with what you see. You can always take it up more or take it up less and make sure that you try flaps for the first time nice and high. So at this point, the basic setup for our flaps is now complete. I want to take the time with you now to show you some other really advanced mixes that you can do just to show you how capable and how easy the Aura is to work with, but also how you can fine tune a setup like this to give you an even better experience and kind of dial out some of the effects that maybe flap rounds will give that you'd naturally have to hold.
Now, typically when you lower your flaps, a couple of things are gonna happen. You're gonna increase lift and you're also gonna increase drag. That increased lift and drag, if you have a lot of flaps, is gonna cause your nose to pitch up. Now, on the Spectrum radios, a very common feature that I really like is where you can actually dial in your elevator to counteract that um, pitch authority that the flaps are gonna bring onto you with the nose wanting to climb up. I'm gonna show you how to do that with an additional mix right now. All we simply need to do is we're gonna go ahead and go to our scroll bar we're gonna to go to mix number two and create a new mix. That new mix is gonna always be on. Our master channel is gonna be channel six and our slave is gonna be elevator. We're gonna want this for all three flight modes. And now when I lower the flaps, you're gonna see the red bubble jump to the, it's gonna be mix rate positive. I'm gonna go ahead and make this really extreme so you can see that and then we'll dial it back. I'm gonna dial all the way up to 60. So there's my flaps down, my elevator's down. When I raise it, it goes back up. Creating a mix is just as simple as that. It's very visible, it's very easy to configure, and it's very easy to adjust. Now for this, I'm gonna go ahead and take a good guess. If I'm dropping this about 30%, that this is gonna probably wanna be about 15. So I'm just gonna start at 15. I can always make this greater as I need. I don't need nearly as much deflection down um, as I do with the deflection on the flaps. So I'm just gonna set this to Write it, there it is. And now you can see them working together. At this point, you can go out and have a really good experience flying around with flapper ons and experiment with it. I'm gonna go ahead and take this another step deeper here just to show you how easy it is to use the configuration tool, but also how you can fine tune your airplane to get it to fly exactly how you want very easily. So with any time that you have flapper ons, if say you're gonna do a right hand turn and you go to the right, you're gonna have the plane want to pitch to the right, but the problem is, is the left aileron is dropping down. This is causing a lot more drag in something that we call adverse yaw. Adverse yaw is where the nose is gonna move in the opposite direction of your roll. Now this can be really bad because if you have too much drag there, that wing can stall out and cause you to stall spin in the opposite direction. This is a very common thing that people have happen when they're flying stall aircraft in the real world and also with model aviation. A really good way to counteract that is to limit the travel of the downward aileron, but only specifically when you have your flap runs activated. We can actually do this really easily with another mix. So at this point, I'm gonna to go to mix number three. And instead of saying always on, I'm gonna to go to head and hit switched on. You're gonna see as I have my flaps on and off that I want this to be activated when my flaps are down, but I don't want this mix to be activated when my flaps are up. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this by simply clicking on and hit mix active. And on position number one here, I'm gonna have it be inactive. Now for this, I'm gonna have my ailerons be the master and channel six be the slave. And just like before, I want all three flight modes to be active. I'm gonna write this right now and lock that into my aura. There we go. Now at this point, when I switch my flap modes on and off, I'm gonna be able to go to our, my mix rate negative and my mix rate positive. And I'm just gonna go ahead and depend on how you mount the servos, it's whether this number needs to be negative or positive. So I'm just gonna move this to positive 55 and the one below it to negative 55. And then I'm gonna hit write all. And now when I move the sticks, you're gonna notice that if I wanna to roll to the right, that my right aileron's gonna lift up, but my left aileron's gonna stay put. What this is going to do is this is gonna go ahead and give me the ability to decrease lift, causing it to roll to the right without stalling this anymore. Now you can still have adverse yaw still affect you if you're flying slow enough and depend on how your airframe is, but this is a really cool way to kind of limit how much throw that you have on the downward wing so you don't stall out your wing prematurely. This is also another really cool feature that the Spectrum radios have in their computerized radio, but my goal is to give you the ability to have a very simple, cheap, affordable radio and have all the power stored here in your Aura. The really cool thing about this is all this program that you're doing right now stays with the Aura, so you can jump from radio to radio or let your buddy fly it and bind to his radio without losing any sub trims, mixes, or settings. Okay, so we got that. I'm actually gonna dial this back to about 30. I think 50 is a little bit extreme. And again, what I would recommend is that you take this out to the field and you fly it and then you make an adjustment and then you fly it and then you make an adjustment. Once you like it, you lock it in and then we save it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and write all that to Aura. You can see now I have just a little bit of downward travel but a lot more upwards travel and that's exactly what I want.
Now there's one more cool thing I'm gonna show you here, kind of along the lines, to make this plane even easier to fly with flap rounds. And this is something that no other radio has, but oftentimes when you fly your model, that you have to do it manually. I'm gonna show you how you can set this up and adjust this, so as you fly with your flap rounds down, you can continue to fly just like you normally do without having to get heavy on the rudder. So for that, we're gonna create one more mix. We're gonna go down to number four. We're gonna hit switch on and off just like we did before. Again, you can see as we move it back and forth that we have our positions. I want it to be active when the, uh, when the flaps are down but not active when the flaps are up. And what I would like to do, I'm gonna put all three flight modes and then we're gonna write that all over the aura. There we go. And what I'd like to have done now is I'm gonna take my aileron to my rudder. So now, as we move back and forth, we're gonna have an issue where as we turn, this is gonna go down, this is gonna go down, but we're still gonna have a little bit more drag here wanting to give us that adverse yaw. Typically what you would do is you'd actually put a little bit of rudder in and coordinate your turn. We're gonna counteract that by having it naturally put that rudder in for us when those flaps are down. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pick a number here. I'm gonna hit negative 45, I'm gonna write that to the aura. And now when I turn right, oop, I got it backwards. So all I need to do is go from negative 45, let's go to positive 25. There we go, right to aura. Okay, there's my left. Let's go ahead and go to the right. So now I'm gonna go to the mix rate positive. We're gonna go positive 25. All right, so you can see here, as I give right aileron, this is gonna cause more drag. It's gonna wanna do that adverse yaw. And I'm naturally gonna be feeding in a little bit of rudder. We can increase that number very easily. We'll go 45 on both to make it a little bit more extreme. There we go. So you guys can see in a very short amount of time that you can actually program your flapper on. You can limit how they travel to make sure that you don't have any adverse yaw. You can increase your elevator to take away that pitch up authority as you add in your flaps. You can even dial in your rudder and mix it to your ailerons when your flaps are deployed to keep your turns coordinated and to keep that adverse yaw at a minimum. Now you can go through all these mixes and individually adjust these until you have the plane flying exactly how you would like it to be, where it's not only stable, but incredibly maneuverable and flies great. So the goal with this episode was to show you how to do flap runs, but also how to use other mixes to counteract oftentimes the adverse effects that the flap runs may cause to give you guys the best experience. You may have a design where you don't need to touch anything with the elevator and the rudder, or you may need to go through all three of these to get the best flying experience possible. That's up to you to choose in the tune. Once you're happy with the way everything flies, it's already gonna be stored on your Aura config tool. But if you wanna be able to return to this in the future, one thing you can do is save this configuration so you have that in case you hop it from one model to the other or if you wanna use it as a starting grounds for an additional model. Now anytime that you hit right all to Aura, you're gonna be automatically saving all that information on your Aura board. Now if you wanna save the actual configuration file that you've created to possibly use on an additional model, you can easily do so by simply going up to File, hit and Save Aura Configuration File, and then simply naming it whatever you want to name it. Now this will be really useful, say if you're going from something like a simple cup to a simple scout where the orientation of the board is different, but pretty much everything else is the exact same. You can simply take that file, you can load it, and then you can modify it again to custom tune it. So we pretty much walked through every type of setup that you'd want to do around your flap runs, and you guys are ready now to take your airplane to the field and fly for the first time. The biggest thing we want to do is hit disconnect, unplug our batteries, and then cycle the power. So friends, I wanna thank you for being part of the Flight Test family. Thank you for walking through flap around setups. And like I said earlier in the video, Flex Innovation is gonna be coming out with a really great update for the Aura Config tool that's gonna to make flap around programming even easier than what you saw right now. Thanks for being part of the Flight Test family, and we'll see you next time.